to this as well. Antonio is there as well. Hello, Antonio. Welcome. Maybe say hello, everybody. Welcome to the Media Club. Uh, I'm Michael, and I'm uh, happy to welcome everybody to the Media Club today again. Uh, we're going to discuss today um, The Attention Merchant by Tim Wu. And I'm going to go quickly over like a little bit the agenda, actually what we thought about uh, how we would organize or structure a bit the, the discussion. But um, yeah, so first we thought about maybe having like a uh, first round table, like first impressions about about the book, how we liked it. And then in a second, um, second part, we thought about having like little breakout sessions. But I think given the fact that today we are a small, small group, we might need actually like that. We're going to see how that's going to work out. And then if you have anything to add, like as, um, that you would like to speak today, so you're more than welcome to, to jump in and um, to, to add something. And Devina, she's actually going to, she's going to be out. She's going to handle the tw Twitter. Uh, so if you want to like to Twitter on uh, Dichi Uri or hashtag Media Club, so you're more than welcome to do so. And... Um, then maybe like a like a quick word about the like as a little introduction to the book. So the attention merchant is apparently like a very elegant and very cle clearly written book according to the New York Times review. I've I've seen that right here. Um, they said it's like a very pleasing read. It's about the the history of advertising. It starts about newspapers, how a newspaper started in the 19th century in New York to uh, to use advertising as a business model. And Tim Wu then actually, he continues in his book to talk about the attention merchant, about this type of merchant, this kind of salesperson. And he looks like at different examples, like in the United States, but also in France, he's talking about the poster before he then actually starts about uh, talking about advertisement, about propaganda in during the World War One in, in the UK. And um, so he's taking a historical view on the, um, on the advertisement and on the media history. A quick word also about the, about Tim Wu. So it's not his first book actually. He wrote another book uh, that is called the master switch and in this book actually he's talking also about the inf information empires uh, which makes him I believe like uh, somebody who's who's done research on the topic and, and one last word about Tim Wu is actually yeah he's a trained lawyer and today he is a professor at Columbia Law School in New York so and these are like like a little introduction to to the book. So maybe um, tell me how did you like it? Did you anything that uh, Davina, April? How did you like the book? Any first reactions? Did you have time to read it or not at all? Or did you? Okay. Oh. Um, I'm I'm happy to go to go first. It was, it was wonderful to, for me to see the history behind it because I, I was not aware of some of it. It was, it was quite uh, fascinating. Um, so, and I think he made the case by doing the history, just how very, just a minute, I have to close my door. I have that. Sure, sure, sure. It was fascinating to to see just how we've come to where we are now, and yeah. he, definitely he's an attorney. The way he makes his case, okay. And uh, from so so, I skipped kind of I I did skimming the whole middle part, but um, but I, I liked this um quote on page 153 yes about um 
the meeting, oh, the, the Leary would remember with McLuhan because this, this jives with the, the McLuhan book that I'm reading right now, the original 1964 Understanding uh, Media, The Extensions of Man. Yeah. And on 153, he, I believe, is talking about McLuhan, who said, it got me thinking along the lines, the successful philosophers were also advertisers who could sell their new models of the universe to large numbers of others, thus converting thought to action, mind to matter. Mm. So, mm. so that the philosophy, okay, so they're making also that connection between like the, the getting the attention of the people and they're making actually, maybe they're even better than the others to get the attention of the, or to convince also the people and then to translate that into action. So that's something. Uh -huh. Are you still there, April? Maybe, I think we lost her. She, she'll come back soon because that's what happened with me as well before the meeting started. Okay, I see. So that's going to be... Okay. Um, I think that's... Yeah, I'll just, just write to her in uh, the chat. Huh. Yeah, I'm just um, getting in touch with her. Okay, we have like a little problem right here. Yeah, I think she got the message because, um, yeah, I think she got the message. Some of the stuff. Yeah. What about you, Divina? Did you like the book? Did you, what did you, did you have time to, to dive into the book? So I didn't get time to read the entire book. I looked at whatever was, was available uh, to me online. Okay. Um, so there were a few pages that I browsed through on movie books and uh, very quickly, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I saw a couple of videos. So um, there's this one video that I came across in which he, um, in a way he delves into history, but he also talks about how attention has become a prime commodity today because yeah. of social media, uh, because uh, everyone's fighting to grab that attention, uh -huh. um, especially in the digital and social media world, it has become, uh, it's like real estate. The price for your attention is going up. Yeah. So that, that was really interesting for me. Um, and um, how like water, food, uh, how these commodities, the prices are increasing, our data, our privacy, is also something um, that's getting commodified. Oh. Uh, so the the yeah the commodification, the datafication of us, yeah, uh, our lives. Um, and I was actually in context reading another article. Okay. Uh, let me just quickly look at if I can find it here. So there was this article that I was looking at uh, uh, by. Uh, Zainab Kutechi on uh, how we are tenants on our own devices okay. uh, and that also sort of speaks about how everything is for rent and how um, everything that we put online we don't actually have rights to them anymore. Okay. That data is taken um, and sort of bundled into a lot of other data about a lot of other people and to modify. Okay, I see. And how things which um, you know, initially even uh, big retailers could you know, not dream of yeah. uh, is now becoming very easy. So imagine uh, like, like a really big retailer in, in the 70s. I can't give examples because um, I can't think of any <laughs> right now. Don't worry, don't worry. Yeah, but imagine like a big retailer uh, with a lot of chains in the 70s getting into your house on your smartphone device yeah. or on your telephone. That's, that, that couldn't have been possible. Yeah. But today, I, I was really thinking today, like when I was coming to the, like mm -hmm. coming to university in the morning, 
I really thought about like this attention, how they, they're getting our attention. And I thought about like the mobile phone this morning, how actually like uh, how we today, we, we look at our mobile phone every day in the metro or like on the subway dry, uh, drive. And um, so I thought as well, like I, I, this little tool that we have in our pocket actually today, like 20 years ago, it was not the case. And it has so many different functionalities that it always brings us back like to like to use that kind of device this technical device and then actually like to uh, yeah it really uh, yeah it really keeps us then actually like in the uh, it keeps us in the in the loop of the technical use so i thought for me that was Hey, April, there she's back. So for oh. me, that was something. <laughs> oh, I'm back in a meeting. Yay! Oh, Yay. very cool. Our internet. Yeah. It's, the internet is down. Oh, okay. here I am. I just got back on on my phone. Okay, oh, sorry. okay. I'm sorry about that, but the whole building internet went down. Whoa. Oh, no. How do you work today? That's uh, but coming back to your thought quickly, I, I thought that was really something interesting about um, that. Also, like the great filler. I want to jump back to to April's comment about the. Uh, I thought it's it's very true like, about the philosophers that they actually also had like this kind of getting the attention and spreading the information like in the in the old days, and then actually um, by sharing actually like their attention, having like then actually the option to translate their thoughts into action and I think maybe that's somehow like a precondition right that if you want to change something that's somehow so it's because not everybody was shared as some philosophers you see some philosophers were shared more than others I can can imagine or they got more attention than others for example I'm thinking out loud maybe let's say about Sigmund Freud I can imagine that the thoughts of Sigmund Freud was not unique to, I would not say that this was something unique to Sigmund Freud at the time. So I think there was like some people already like talking about that, but he in the end, he got like the whole attention. And I think that's something uh, very interesting to, to keep in mind who's getting the attention. So okay. Okay. that's a very, uh, very interesting uh, thought. So it's going to be. Give us a love. Yeah, yeah. I was just explaining April about my my first impression about the book, and I actually came back then to the um, to my metro ride or subway drive to this morning, and I thought just about the mobile phone. How actually like the mobile phone is always getting our attention, and I thought about this kind of device of our mobile telephone, the smartphone and that there's actually so many different functionalities. So it's always bringing us back like to that one, to that one uh, uh, tool and then actually catch it, getting our attention again. For example, I'm going on holidays. I know that I'm gonna use every day my mobile phone because I want to use actually my phone to take pictures. I'm gonna make notes to actually my calendar. I'm gonna send myself emails. I'm gonna get WhatsApp messages. And then I'm gonna go back like to the seven newspapers I'm reading and I'm not even reading all of them, but I'm just skimming them. So it's very interesting about this kind of uh, attention that's actually how this is actually, how my, my concentration and attention is actually getting into the, into that phone you see in that smartphone so that's something i wanted to to say Davina, you want to quickly maybe summarize like what he said to me about your first reaction to the book okay so um why you guys got interested in the history of the book i got interested in the social media aspect of the book and how um michael and i were discussing how um, attention has now become commodified um so because it is attention in the social media world that we are fighting for. Uh, for instance, the founder of the like button on Facebook actually said that um, uh, connecting the world is just a tagline that Facebook uses. The real commodity that we're after is um, the user's attention. Go to the front real quick. So yes. Yes. Hang out for a little bit. They got time, okay? Ah, okay. It was <laughs> 
Sorry, someone was talking. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I thought someone else was online. Um, so yeah, um, how our attention um, is becoming a scarce commodity and uh, how in the social media world, in the digital world, um, people are trying their best to grab our attention, mm. uh, which is what attracted me to work. Over to April, because I really want to listen to the part where you spoke about um, successful philosophers were also advertisers. You, you mm. were talking about that when you got the talks. Mm -hmm. if, okay. About the, did you any thought, April, did you think about any special philosopher actually when you thought about that, when you read this? this uh, citation or that quote or that? Not, not really, only how um, we are now giving almost credence to advertisers as being philosophers. I mean, they, they to a certain extent, rule our lives. Um, it, but it's a double-edged sword because I need this device so that we can be having this meeting yeah. because my my building internet just went down. Yeah. I need to know the weather before I leave the house. I need all these things. And yet when it tells me, oh, my media usage was down, <laughs> and normally I spend four hours and 12 minutes a day, I went, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> so... So I'm having, I have very ambivalent feelings about this and I'm so happy about his term, the attention merchants, because I, I, I'm understanding just how really valuable that attention is and how very addicting it is for the little stuff, the, the clickbait. Yeah. All of a sudden I find myself shopping for, you know, yoga tights. Yeah. <laughs> research. No, I very much agree with you. I think the term attention merchant is very, it's a very nice term. So I'm not sure if somebody else used it uh, in the past before, but also by looking at the historical or taking a historical perspective, I think it's very nice to see the different actors. You see, and he gives like very nice examples, for example, from the first newspaper guy, I think yeah. Benjamin Day, who actually said then he's going to say, I'm not going to sell the newspaper for six, six, six yeah. pennies, right. for one penny. And then he's just like harvesting like all that attention. And then he's saying, well, you see, I have like right here that attention of yeah. 50 people. So how much do you pay me to? And I think that's very, it's a very smart idea. Um, and you see that actually today as well, like everybody wants to have these clicks and the whole attention. So I think it's, um, yeah. So I thought for me, that was, uh, very interesting to see and it makes it easy for me right now to spell out like or like to draw like a map of of this kind of information um landscape today you see because i think it's very important if you want to get an understanding of that a bit more so for me that was very helpful so divina you had maybe a question right uh yeah so no um i was just thinking how Wu is um quite um uh, <laughs> adept at doing this. So he comes up with these. I'm sorry. My brother is really excited. He comes hey. up with these um, keywords. Like attention merchants and yes, obviously he's grabbing our attention right now. Uh, like attention merchants and uh, he was apparently, who was apparently credited with also coining the term net neutrality. So that was interesting to me. Mm. He's, you know, given his background in law, it's interesting how he's looking at, you know, both ends of the spectrum the attention merchants as well as net neutrality. So that's, that's interesting. Can you, I, I do not know the term net neutrality too much. To what does it uh, refer to? I know apparently he spoke about it like in his book before in the, uh, uh, I forgot the name the, of his book before. But can you speak to that like a little bit or maybe net neutrality, what he means? Sure. So, uh, essentially, uh, when you're trying to, so I'll give you an example. A uh, while ago in India, uh, Facebook wanted to come, um, come up with this concept of free basics. Uh, essentially, what they were trying to say was that we will give you certain essential services for free. Um, and that includes, um, you know, something like a few aspects of Facebook, a few aspects where you could go online and search for jobs, search for resources, etc. 
Okay. Uh, but um, it's obvious that, <coughs> excuse me, it's obvious what you get in return is people's data, right? So um, it was because of free basics that um, in India especially, the entire net neutrality debate um, got a lot of uh, power, got a lot of steam behind it. Right. So basically, all user content, web platforms, everything must be treated equally. Free. Yes, okay. must be treated equally. You do not get to um, hold bandwidth at ransom just by providing certain services free. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Is it also like about like that? Um, okay. I see. No, go on. Is I'm thinking out, as you see, I'm thinking out loud. You see, sometimes what happens with my mobile phone, sometimes I cannot use an application because actually I should give actually permission to everything <laughs> and give like access to all my personal data and uh, the application can take um, pictures and uh, can make videos and can access my... And if I would not, if I do not accept, I will not be able to use that application. Is that like the part of net neutrality or not? That's part of the privacy aspect. The privacy That's debate. Privacy, privacy debate, okay. Yes. Uh, versus net neutrality is at the end of the um, attention margins. <laughs> okay. Um, so if I'm Facebook or if I'm Google and I'm claiming to be uh, in charge of certain very valuable resources. Uh -huh. um, so for instance, these days for every little thing, the first thing that we do is Google. Okay. okay. So um, I um, demand a certain bandwidth be uh, allotted to me, uh -huh. um, that I be uh, given that much amount of attention uh -huh. uh, for granted. Mm -hmm. by default. Right now I have the option of either going to Google or going to Yahoo or going to Bing or any other search engine um, as, I, as I please. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, maybe I could, I could send a link in the chat for yeah. more on I know she well, she muted Whoops. herself. She was looking for the, she's looking for that link, you see. Yeah, but ah. he, he got very famous actually, Tim Wu on that term on the net neutrality. So that's the reason why I was interested in the, in the whole thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, I really like the historical perspective. For me, like for getting an understanding of the, of the information merchant, that was something very, very interesting and very cool. Um, I, I was wondering, do you think that you can actually use like these things like in your in your teaching somehow? Would you be able oh, to? That's so, oh, I'm so glad you asked that question. Uh huh. Can I use this in my teaching? I, I'm becoming more self-aware of the time and, att and attention I'm demanding of my students at the beginning of class. Yeah. I, so I'm becoming a little bit more self-aware, but yeah, that's that would be something to, to convey this to students. I don't know. Because you see, like Samantha, she was asking us actually if we would, she's uh, asking and she proposes one question actually. I'm going to put that question in the, in the chat box. She's asking um, uh, basically, and I put that in the chat box. She's saying, after having read this book, uh, hold on, after, hold on uh, to everyone. I'm gonna to have to send it to everyone. After having read this book, what do you think might be three media concepts that you would want to teach? And you see right here, I'm, yes, I was wondering how to, you see, I'm teaching information literacy. So I'm gonna talk about like the information landscape maybe at one point that there's like lots of money in the business, that not everything is free. But then, I'm not sure, so I was wondering, how I could actually teach that you see and but just by giving you like the example of the uh, of the application you see that I'm using on my smartphone I want to talk maybe with my students about uh, data like privacy actually about like how to use so that's like some ideas I would go but I have not actually rethought really like further through how to use that book actually in my teaching for example 
No, so it actually ties in very well, I believe, with information literacy because um, when you talk about the privacy debate, so privacy, information, attention, these are all very closely linked. Um, I guess, um, you know, people don't realize when they're signing off. So for instance, a lot of people, young people, uh, find it cumbersome to go through the privacy agreement. Mm -hmm. um, do we, are we actually aware of all the different um, data or privacy issues that our social media apps, um, you know, bring like all the, all the problems or all the um, debates that these social media applications actually bring into our lives? I'm not sure. So mm. for instance, um, a lot of youngsters who use Snapchat uh, believe that uh, a snap that you send or a story that you send, um, despite the internet being notorious for keeping everything online every time, yeah. uh, the promise of snap is that things will disappear. Right. But that's not really true. You have applications which allow you to screenshot snaps. Right. So, right. So are we really aware of these things? I think this ties in really well with awareness or media literacy. Uh, and how, what, you know, sometimes we take things for granted, yes. So Snap claims that your data will not be stored or your data will not be, you know, you're not, people will not be able to screenshot what you send them. Yeah. Uh, but is that really true? Yeah. And are people aware of the issues, you know, that these social media applications bring, bring to your lives? So data, privacy, attention, these all tie in very well together. I like that when you, I like the, the when I liked also April when you, you were like nodding with your head about that term of awareness. Mm -hmm. I think that was kind of interesting because it was at the point when you were saying that you give a, if once you give like information away, are students aware of that? And basically that's like the, because many times when we, students click on that button, yeah, I allow like cookies to follow me. They give like that permi permission that actually like another company, like an attention merchant can actually like use whatever we do. And actually then actually they can actually follow, you see in a way they can use that data or like that permission that we are giving. And then actually they can, uh, they can better focus on our attention actually, or getting our attention, I believe. And I think that's something that sounds very interesting to me actually like to, it's like the student side on the one side, then they click on the, on the other side, you have like the attention merchant who's trying to, to catch like the, see what so, I'm saying? Yes, and, and I'm thinking that I'm formulating an answer to your question. So I think for my students who are uh, 11th and 12th graders, 17 and 18 years old, the important thing that I can make them aware of is how important it is to take control of their own attention, that, that they are aware of this. Um, because the awareness is everything. We can no longer have hard and fast rules about this. They have to make their rules at every click. Am I really going to click cookies? Am I going to allow Facebook to know everyone in my uh, address yeah. book. Am I going, what am I going to allow? So that part of media literacy, I think, is something that every single teacher could be instilling. Yeah. No, but uh, so my doubt is, um, how do you survive without allowing these cookies? How do you survive without clicking on the I agree at the end of yeah. every document? Because you either agree or you disagree. There's no in between. So you either access the platform or you don't. Now, I want to snap with my friends, right? Yeah. I can't not be the only person in class or, you know, in my, in my group or whatever. Not, not on TikTok or not on Snap. Yeah. So how do you, how do you, if, if, you're, if your students come and ask you, what is the alternative? What do we say? I think like if you focus, let's say for, let's, let's focus on young people, for example, they're going to be like on Snapchat or like on WhatsApp. They're going to, they have to decide to stay in contact with people. Or even right now, you, April, you, Divina, and myself, the three of us, we want to stay in contact. 
if we cannot use Zoom, then we're not going to have a conversation. Right. And we're going to have to agree that maybe Zoom is going to be take ownership of the video that we are just that we are recording. You see, and um, in a way, maybe they, then they're going to use it like for like a, another purpose or like something that's um, maybe at the first thing maybe not very. There's not a high impact on us, you see, but they're gonna make somehow money out of that in the end, you see. So no, yes, it's it's yeah, it's it's kind of funny, you see. So what's very interesting and in what I'm talking right now that in the book they are talking also about like uh, consumer re revolts actually, how consumers actually are trying to regain control over that. Let's say, for example, how. Um, and I, I listened to like some speeches of Tim Wu. How actually, how can you regain control about how you can, about your own um, attention? And Tim Wu is actually bringing up right here like the example of the remote control. So he was saying at the beginning of the 50s on television that there was actually no way of, that suddenly like advertising would pop up but as long as the remote control did not exist, people could not change easily and they were like actually exposed to the remote control, uh, to the, the advertisement. So in a way then like some people who were very annoyed about the advertisement, they invented the remote control saying that you remotely you have control about if you wanna watch the advertisement or you can click away. And I thought that is actually very interesting like to see how you can actually regain control of that kind of attention. Um, but at the same time, thinking out loud, I think that you're always like in a catch-22 because what we just said right now is either I accept Snapchat or it doesn't exist so far like on the mobile app. So you can either, either you're in or you're out. And um, I don't know. So it's, uh, that was also like a topic like about this consumer revolts about uh, this uh, attention harvesting. What, so, uh, which, which sort of brings me to this article that I was reading. It's actually an opinion um, uh, by Srinivasan on uh, New York Times. Now, um, Srinivasan is an antitrust scholar. And uh, what, what, what they're saying is privacy is an antitrust issue. Mm -hmm. Now, what you just spoke about the remote control. Now, we have so many channels on television, so many options. Whereas on social media, do we really have options? So there's an entire demographic on Facebook and given Facebook's grand, huge scale and it's kind of um, monopolistic tendencies of washing out competition or assimilating them into them into their business. Like for instance, they um, they just bought Instagram a couple of years ago. They, they also now have WhatsApp. So we think that Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp are three different social media applications, but they're essentially, you know, owned by the same company. It's, mm -hmm. And that's one company. It, uh, the major stakeholder is one person. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, even the board, I mean, it does have a board, but the board is can only do so much. So, I mean, I think that in this case, in, in the social media world, it's the entire um, idea of attention merchants is, it's even riskier, it's even uh, more dangerous because um, Facebook is a monopoly, for instance. Mm -hmm. Uh, Facebook's uh, so the, the way it has wiped out competition, it has it has put our data at, at risk, which is why I mean, yeah, yeah, and so, and and, to, and, and following your thought, Davina, about it being a monopoly, it's now been shown, at least in America, because so many people don't watch news, they don't read newspapers, they're getting their news through their social media, i.e. Facebook, that they're making decisions that they're going to vote in our democracy based on information that could be driven by a bot, you know, a, yeah. a troll. So, 
so it, it has some really far reaching implications. Yeah, I think like the, the case of Facebook and especially like in the case of the, the elections in 2016, I think it, and also like the big scandal of Cambridge Analytica. Mm -hmm. So it, it's very true that there's like some, some attention harvesting and also like that it's very scary. So in a way yeah. that it can, it apparently really can influence like, but I'm always, yeah. So there's talking a, about scary, um, we've actually had a couple of incidents uh, in India. Uh, India WhatsApp is really popular because um, it's easy to use, does not, um, we have a lot of cheap smartphones now thanks to China. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, uh, these days because of, a, of a, an Indian company called Reliance, um, mobile data, mobile internet is also very cheap. Um, okay. Also vernacularization in WhatsApp. So you can send out um, messages in Hindi, Gujarati, Tamil, Telugu, India is a very diverse country. So, Talking about scary, we've had a few mob lynchings in India because uh, an entire group of people uh, forwarded certain WhatsApp messages, which turned out to be fake news. And um, some people actually lost their lives, um, which is why before our elections, we actually just recently got um, our prime minister got a new term. Mm -hmm. um, before the 2019 elections, we actually had Facebook, WhatsApp uh, teams working with the government to avoid, um, you know, the kind of overreach that happened during the USA presidential election in 2016. Yeah. yeah. I'm just thinking about right now, like the big vision, actually, what we are, we are looking for, you see, and I'm saying to myself what I would like wish, like in this, also like in the United States, like the the elections but also right now in India um, or, but probably like in any country you w would like actually that people are looking for serious information you see so that's like the big aim you see so and in a way um, I was wondering how to 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 manage that you see in uh, on that huge scale you see because I remember like I think the numbers like for the Cambridge Analytica scandal was about 80 million Facebook accounts were actually like used in the by trolls and like to get like uh, targeted uh, advertisements. So in a way, um, I'm just wondering how right here, like the consumer actually, or like the internet user, how they could actually, um, yeah. How get to, back the reins of their attention. Yeah, or like regain that kind of control, you see, so, and um, of course, like one answer of course is always to say, that education can do that you see so you could always say that you educate uh, students and then they're gonna know more about it and then they're gonna avoid like these things but i believe that there might be i'm not sure i think there could be like also if for example if there could be like a second facebook that would have like different um would have like a different uh, attitude towards social networks and about like data privacy for example that could be maybe like something, but it does not seem the case, you see, so that's something I thought. Another thought I had quickly about your, about when you're saying like the Chinese, uh, the cheap phones and everything, I, I was coming across like one line I thought that was very interesting in the, in the book, actually it was talking about, in the beginning you make things free, so you get like, you gain like as a business model, you have like kind of something like a market share, and then afterwards you make it more expensive. So I thought that was also some, something very interesting to see. Uh, so that was like another thought that just popped up in my mind that I, I wanted to, to share. And maybe like a little anecdote. I just came back from Munich and um, I talked to my friend who's a journalist and he's actually saying that they're laying off people in his newspaper. The reason why is actually for the moment that they are laying off people is because they do not have enough advertisement anymore. Ah. So, and I think that has been, we've seen, I think we've seen that maybe already like the Boston Globe, I remember like one of the older mm -hmm. newspapers, they, newspapers, they're losing like this, this business model that has existed like in the past, like with having advertisements for the newspapers, the printed version is right now like going down. 
and there's maybe like a, a different way right now like how uh, advertisement is how they do advertisement so that's one thing and the other thing that was very interesting is actually he's saying that people today they have like 80,000 subscribers who pay 36 euros for having like the full newspaper online which is apparently for them like a huge success uh -huh. uh, but it, what's very interesting right here is actually to see that people are willing to pay 80 and like 36 euros a month for a good newspaper and uh, it's way more than it used to be you know with then if you bought the hard copy exactly so so in a way that's very interesting to see actually that there is also like this kind of mentality that exists that people are willing actually like to to put some money on the table to pay for quality and um yeah that was something i i was very uh and i think tim Wu he speaks about this at one point as well like that that maybe we have to rethink maybe the whole internet again because everything is always free 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 but then maybe the quality is not necessarily always the, the best, you see. So maybe yeah. that there's something to think about. But I'm, as a, as a German, and maybe being in Europe, I heard right away, like, the economic idea behind, you see. So <laughs> it's like the money talks, you see. So I heard right away, like, the greenbacks. Uh, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So yeah. it was like that there's also, like, a, again, like a, a money argument, you see. So... But I'm not sure to, he's bringing like a very nice comparison right here. He's comparing it like to the, to the cheap food and to the expensive food. So he's saying if you have cheap food, we, can, we should not expect anything <laughs> better than cheap food. So in a way we should maybe think about maybe putting more, if you want to have quality food, we have to pay a bit more. So that's something to. Or grow it yourself. Or, or grow it yourself. That's, I, I, that's interesting. I did not think about that. Grow it yourself, yeah. Yeah. Grow, um, grow, grow the information yourself. There's a connection here, I think, going on with um, in this part four of the Attention Merchant. Yeah. Um, Wu talks about the first great harvester of human attention was religion because mm. there's this impulse to idolize which has not faded in our secular era yeah. and only gone seeking after strange gods so we maybe are shifting this desire to find something to idolize revere or follow uh through these media which is not entirely appropriate you know we are we're following all these uh celebrities we're following yeah. royalty we're following uh rather than uh, and we're getting sidetracked and and that's how they're able to shanghai our attention um to get us to focus on things like my next lipstick so yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah it's it's very true like the um that the I, I very much agree with you like the or like the tim Wu maybe like when he's saying that religion was it was very institutionalized like to grab the attention mm -hmm. if i have like a very simplified view on uh, religion like in the ninth century or like 11th century and you would have like these beautiful churches mm -hmm. and people would, might, would maybe be less uh, literate as today and they would see like these nice uh, stained classes in the churches and the nice paintings yeah and there would be like a whole story of the bible written and not everybody could read yeah. uh i think they had like really like a monopoly like a monopoly on on how to to or that was like a very strong and it was really like a ritual you see because every sunday people would go to church and they would listen and they would have like there would be prime time in the church so but it was like then like an elite like a spiritual elite or i'm not sure how to call these kind of people and uh, today it's getting then uh with the internet, it's just going, there's no limit. It just can go anywhere, I have the feeling. So whoever gets the attention is going to be this. I'm, I, I don't know how people then going to decide actually what's a celebrity. So, 
I don't know. It's a big, because what gets attention? So that's like a big question, actually. Why is getting that's, one image? That's a good question. What, what and why? What is getting attention and why? You see, so because, for example, right now we had like the, in the United States, we had that video from uh, Perosi, like the Speaker of the House, Nancy uh -huh. Perosi. And her, I remember that her video went viral, you see, after like it was like posted on Twitter, you see, and, and obviously right here, it's because it's on, on Twitter and there's Trump. So everybody's focusing right away, like here on the celebrity and it goes viral, but why do not other videos, or why does one cat video that we see somehow get suddenly like a superstar? So. Good question. So these are, and I don't have myself answers about that, so it's going to be. These are um, all good questions. <laughs> that's good. So I was, um, I was working on this one particular project on memes, and um, we were trying to see what exactly is the formula for something going viral. Okay. And frankly, no one has the answer. So, you know, the only one who doesn't have answers about these things. Um, there was this one particular meme which became uh, famous, so famous that it started getting copied um, elsewhere as well, which is, well, in a way, a feature of meme, right? Um, Do you mean I think we lost you, but I think, for me, that's like a very interesting, I would like to hear more about that study, actually, because knowing why I've... Oh, very Actually, your video. Yeah, can, can you talk a little bit more about that study that you're doing about these memes? So did you just, how did you do that? You looked at one meme and you looked why it, or how it got uh, more, why it went viral? Yes, so I, um, I looked at two different memes. Two different? Okay. Uh, yes, two different memes, yeah. but I'm talking about um, a third one, which I didn't look at in, in that particular chapter okay. in a lot of detail. So this one is just a middle-aged Indian woman okay. um, sipping a cup of tea and um, telling people, addressing anybody in general, um, hi friends, chai tea. Means hello, friends. Have some tea. Okay. <laughs> uh, and um, for some strange reason, people really liked that video, and they started following her, and they come back to the same video again, it's, and it, it became memeified. So there are other people who started doing the same thing. Uh, people started doing versions with uh, different things, okay. and it went out of India. So it started getting copied in China, Sri Lanka, um, also um, somewhere in Europe. I can't find, quite uh, remember the name of the country. Okay. But yeah, uh, yeah, it's it's quite interesting what will go viral and what won't. We don't really have a formula for that. Hmm. But for me, when Wu talks about attention merchants, I think he talks about a certain uh, monetary aspect to it. Mm -hmm. So there is, so when he's commodifying something, uh, when he's talking about attention, he's talking about what that attention can get you. Yes. Will it get you new users? Will it get you users which come back for the repeat? And um, there was an interesting uh, piece I was reading on uh, how an influencer, a social media influencer, she's on Instagram, and she has 2.6 million followers or something. <laughs> she couldn't sell 36 t-shirts, allegedly. Uh -huh. Yeah. Social influencer, so, okay. So the influencer, in a way, is also an attention merchant. She's or he's claiming that I have so many followers, so many people who view my videos every day or engage with me via memes every day and I can give you this in return. Yeah. Essentially what newspapers were promising, right? Or television was promising to advertisers. Yeah, yeah. And it seems like the influencer bubble is bursting because 2.6 million followers, 36 t-shirts, zero t-shirts sold. Yeah, so it's that's it. I did not... Uh, I... 
I think the term social influence is very interesting, you see, because in the way he's shifting like attention to like certain aspects, you see. Uh, but it reminds me as well, like uh, about the book that we were reading about the um, thinking fast and slow. So, the, um, and I remember like when we talked about like framing or anchoring and we said like somebody might have like a, somebody might say something and given the fact what the person is saying, we might say something. Uh, so in a way, like the, the first aspect would actually frame our our thoughts, you see, so like our thinking, our decision, our action. And the social influences in a way, like somebody who would do that, you see, he would be like maybe somebody who's socially respected and uh, then influence like the, so I, yeah, for me, that's very interesting to see, like and make the link right here to the social thinking fast and slow from Daniel Kahneman. I, I thought that was like a, a quick comment on that. I'm glad you made that connection. Yeah. So, because it, it comes back and, and I'm not sure I was thinking of sometimes as well, like about the, I don't know about the attention harvesting and uh, I always thought about the impact of what's, what's the impact then in the end uh, for the users and about the, I don't know, that was just like thinking out loud. So there was some, I don't know. I thought always like uh, as well, like about reclaiming conversation <laughs> by Shelley Turkle. You remember, like, have you read these? You remember when we read that book? And she yeah. was always complaining that, uh, like, like the young generation, they're always using the phone on the kitchen table and they don't pay attention what parents are saying saying anymore. And she's always saying that um, we have to regain that empathy, and we're losing that actually with all that attention. Uh, getting away on the mobile phones or like whatever it is. So there's, there's some thoughts. I don't know. Hmm. Any, you any... guys get that in your family? Like I get that a lot. In our family? Are you always on your phone? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I, I remember like when I was doing an internship in 2010 and it always sticks with me. I was in New York in LaGuardia Community College. And there was this guy saying to his children, put your fucking phone away. <laughs> <laughs> and I was saying to myself, this guy, I was saying, yeah. And he was always like saying, hey, kids, put your, no, 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 away. And it's the kitchen table. And I, I'm probably, maybe I'm just old school, you see, but it, it reminds me as well, like about when you think about like this kind of, that, yeah, at one point you have to put it away. And I, ho I actually, I hoped like during the holidays to put it away. But in the end, I was taking pictures, I was making notes, no, no, no. And then I was stupidly again, like stuck on that stupid phone. And I was not, you see, so sometimes I forgot it on purpose, you see, to get away no, from that. No, but see, when I, so, I'm like a millennial, a true blue millennial. And I completely forgot to take a lot of pictures of the university that I went to for my summer school. Okay. I could have done so many Insta stories. I uh, didn't do any. <laughs> and I'm thankful for that. Yeah, that's a very... So yeah, I mean, I'm glad that you got all those pictures. Yeah. What about you, April? Are you actually somehow trying to control your attention on the phone that you're saying? Are you doing that as well? Like you... I, I actually am. And it's really embarrassing uh -huh. because I catch myself uh, being sucked in. So I guess just, I, I have to take my own advice that I want to transmit to my students is that it's all about this metacognition, this self-awareness. Mm. And if we own our own awareness, if we choose to sell it to the attention merchants, do it with knowledge. Yeah. So that's going to be, are you then actually creating also like some space where you just say, I'm not giving my attention away, but you give it like, like uh, consciously to something else? Uh, yeah, I, I'll put it, I definitely put my phone aside when I'm okay. at the end of the day and I'm having okay. a glass of wine with my husband. And okay. that's absolutely, we don't answer the phone at dinner. You know, we have sacred space. So yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but that's, you see, you, you and I, we're like old school, but Divina, you're like the millennial. So how do you control your attention? For you, it's just normal, right? For you, it's just like... Exactly. 
exactly. Like it's part of life. It's <gasps> oh, sorry, he's at it again. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I mean, I don't understand why it's such a big problem. It's for me, especially because I'm a media student, it's like people throwing up the television debate at us. Okay. Oh, you're watching violent TV, you're going to get aggressive. I'm like, no, really? Okay. Uh-huh. It's been repeated. And then the same techno panics for the phone again, you know. Oh, you're always on your phone. You're going to have um, health issues. You're going to have mental health problems. What about your well-being? You're not going to sleep well. Yeah. Well, maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But it's our world. Yeah. And maybe stop judging us so much for living yeah. our life. Yeah, sometimes like, I have that feeling as well that we are maybe like the, the old school. We are just like too much. Don't do that. Don't do that. So. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you yeah, put your TV remote yeah. down and leave it on phone But oh, April, aren't we like this sometimes? I have my, and I'm always, I'm always saying to my friends, don't, don't do this to me, please. Don't go like, no, Michael, don't do that. And I'm saying, leave me, a, give me a break. Right. No, but at the same time, we do it then maybe with the younger generation. We say, don't do that. You see, and the, the way that for them, it's just normal and easygoing and without actually, I don't know. So it's, we need a new Socratic method. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe that's a nice. I like that. The new Socratic method. That's maybe the word of the day. The new Socratic <laughs> method. New Socratic method. I, th- I like that. That's very cool. <laughs> We're going to stop right here with the last okay. thought. So that's going to be nice. Um, ah, there was like a couple of things that um, Sam, she wanted to share with all of us. She was saying that we, there's some, uh, ah, yeah, apparently there's some, yeah, we wanted to look more like for audio or podcasts if you have recommendations. So there's something that you wanted to share in our next meeting and also like for the, if you want to vote. So there's like two links. We're going to send out an email anyway to everybody. So that's going to be something to, I think we're also going to have to see about the date if July 3rd is, is a Wednesday, I believe. It's not a Monday. And just like going to be there. But then I'm yeah. going to, April, you got that? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking. Uh, I'm going to be around, but it's the summer, so a lot of people may be... May be gone. <laughs> what do you think? Also, is the Independence Day celebrations in America. Where's that? In, uh, in your place? USA? No, it's the oh. fourth. Ah, yeah, third. And, ah, yeah, it's true, like third, fourth, yeah, that's true. So people might might go away for a long weekend. I don't know. Yeah, I will see uh, with uh, with Samantha as well what f- works best for her. So that's gonna yeah. be. Uh, but well, I think with the um, new Socratic method, I think we're gonna finish up today. I like that one. The awareness, the self reflection, and the self awareness of this new Socratic method. So, <laughs> so maybe okay. maybe maybe we should read Socrates or Socrates for next time. So like this, we can that bounce out. Great. So I don't know some well, classics. I huh? so enjoyed thinking with both of you today. Yeah, that was great. I really liked it a lot. So it's a small yeah. committee, but it was very very nice <laughs> to have you both. Yeah, with all these good thoughts. I wish bye you a happy bye. new day. Have a nice one. Bizu bizu. Bye bye, Michael. You too, bye April. Bye. See you, Devina. Have a nice one. Bye bye. Should I be? Um, so I I just wanted the question that you sent to discuss about what you would take back from the uh, book.